Well, William, thank you for allowing me to come to your little little show place here. Well, it's a nature preserve. <laughs> nature preserve, I love it. So today's gonna be a treat because there's two cars we're gonna be talking about. You're one of the few people I know that it has two fun cars. And as we talked about it, you've got two affordable fun cars, which is what Vehicle Nanny is all about. And you know, we want to you know, try to keep the hobby alive, make it approachable, and especially for younger, younger enthusiasts out there who may be afraid of what this hobby is. Sure. That's why I love talking to people like you because you get it. Yeah. You've been there, and I've been there, and it kind of makes it fun. So let's start out with this El Camino. So some people know what they are, some don't, but specifically what year make model is this particular El Camino this is a 1970 uh, El Camino uh, with a 350 motor uh, you know it's, it's it's not a whole lot unique to this vehicle but it was affordable at the time and to your point back when I bought it in 05 um, didn't have a lot of money you know and I had kids and a lot of payments and things so I was able to purchase this car at that time, El Camino's, I wouldn't call them, were highly desirable. And fortunately, in the years since I've owned it, it's kind of grown to this thing where now it's become, it's very collectible, especially the 68 and 72. Okay, so this is a 70? 70. Okay. And did I hear you say you've only had it a year? No, since 05. You've had since 05, yes. okay. Yes. So that tells me how long you've owned it. So it's almost well, it's 15, 15 years. years. Holy yeah. crap. So you've had it for a good length of time. Yeah. Um, where'd you find it? Maybe how did you find it? Well, uh, I was looking around the area a little bit, but at that time, um, I had been looking online and uh, they had eBay Motors. And uh, there was a guy on there, and I kept seeing it looked like the same guy with this car and this car and this car and this car. I mean, a lot of them. And uh, it turned out that he was a car collector, single guy, no kids, lived in uh, Portland, Oregon. And he had, I think, 20 or 22 vehicles. And for some reason, he took a job transfer to upstate New York. And he can't take them all. So he put 15 vehicles up on eBay, three El Caminos. And this was the El Camino that caught my eye. And it looked pretty much just like it does now. Uh, we can talk about restoration and stuff in a bit. But uh, it looked pretty much in the picture like you see it now. And it was reasonably priced, except for I had to bid. You know, it was an open auction. And uh, I think I barely won in the last 10 seconds of this thing. And I had it shipped in from Portland, Oregon. Wow. Yeah, I've done those auctions before. And I often wonder if it's the seller's buddy that I'm going up against. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, talk about, you kind of answered my next question about if there's an interesting story to go with it. I think an eBay purchase by itself is rather interesting. Right. I don't, I don't recommend it for the most part because I'm a two-time offender. But... Um, Sometimes you can do okay, but you know, I would recommend to anybody looking at a car, go see the darn thing in person and crawl under it, you know, because people take pictures, they describe things, you hope they're accurate, but you're always going to find things that wasn't in the description that you might have found in person. So yeah. I did pretty well. So along those lines, um, when you got it and you got it home, did it need any significant work? Did you have to do much to it? Yeah, when I got the vehicle in 05, um, when the guy described it to me, it had been a restoration project. Somebody had done the mechanical, but it was the flushing out of all the trim pieces and turn signal bezels and missing lenses and uh, things that, that you, I didn't know that much about the vehicle until I got, I think it was year one's catalog. And then I started seeing, oh, I don't have that. Oh, this is missing. And I found you could spend a lot of money very quickly. It's very with, dangerous going through those, those catalogs. Parts. That's right. So I bought a lot of parts and, uh, it, it ran, but it had a, a, a bad old Rochester carb that was a mess. I ended up replacing that. We can talk about that. Yeah, so uh, that's kind of how you brought it up to standard, but how about modifications or things you've changed on it, maybe took it away from stock or things that you, you've done to make it your own? Right. Um, like I said, the carburetor was a, kind of a basket case when I got it. I, I ended up purchasing an Edelbrock 650. Uh, had points. I replaced that with an electronic ignition. Good move, yep. Um, the other thing I did was it had standard mufflers on it and hard pipes, and so I put in uh, headers. I bought Headman headers and installed them, and then had the full masters put on. And uh, so that's that's the, that's most of the modifications. 
the, the thing that the engine came with, which I think makes this uh, perform a little better, it has the VET head, those double camel band caps, which we used to put on the VET 350s. So that was on this car when I got it. So the engine guy knew what he was doing. He just hadn't flushed it out quite yet and didn't have the right carburetor set up. But once I got the right carb, uh, I mean, for a 350, you know, automatic, um, I think I'm somewhere in the three and a quarter, maybe 340 horse. And for a light car like this, I'm off the line pretty good. The other thing I did uh, about three years ago was it, it was a single spinner. So it didn't have posi, and I definitely want a posi. And a friend of mine had, had an old Chevelle and somehow ended up with two rear ends for it. And I bought his 12 volt posi rear end, had to put on with a sway bar, and it made all the difference. Yeah, it'll be quite a difference. Yeah. So they've done some nice things to it to give it the grunt it needs and deserves. But um, is there one thing that you really like about this car? Is there one thing that stands out that you're like, I'm so glad this car has it? Yeah. I, I, it's the uniqueness of the El Camino. I mean, it catches everybody's eye. Is it a car? Is it a truck? Well, I get, you know, smaller kids. They, what is that thing? You know, they, you don't see this in, in really any other format. You got pickup trucks, you got cars, you got SUVs, but a car with a bed is, 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 is different. And that's what I like about this car. Is if you go to a car show, yes, it has the same front end as a Chevelle. And if you go to a car show, oh, you'll see 10, 15, 68 to 72 Chevelles. You may see one other El Camino, might not even be in the same era, um, but El Camino's risen in popularity. Now, guys are crazy about 70s and 80s El Caminos. Don't quite understand it as much, but, but they love them. And yeah. a lot of them have been you know, tricked out, made into dragsters and everything else. But uh, this is just different. You're going down the road, it, it, you don't see yourself coming and going. Yeah, that's true. Um, if you were to had an influence on the design, or, or whether it's aesthetic or performance or mechanical what would you have changed if you were the guy that penned this car out yeah i guess i take the tack that you can't go back and change history and appreciate what they did back in that era uh, for this car the whole minor thing alone would have changed is there is a fresh air vent for the driver's side that's lacking on the passenger side so this was originally an ac car uh, remove the compressor, put in an AC delete panel, so it's, you know, that's all gone. We're going to rob any horse ball, right? Yeah. So that's the only minor thing. I guess for me is I look at the design and engineering of the, that era and I stand in awe that it was that long ago, but they mass produced these cars. The quality was good. I don't know if I'd call it great, but they were affordable. They looked good. Design mattered back then. Yeah. And, and people were excited about these cars. They were. Still are. Yeah, they were. Yeah, that's true. And I know from year to year, they would change the grill to get people excited about maybe buying that next year's car. So right. it's when style mattered, as you said. Right. All right. Well, I'm pretty sure you're not driving this in the winter. No. And so cab. you've got a daily driver. Yes. Uh, what is it that you drive? I have a 2016 Dodge Journey. So that's your practical utility vehicle, so you don't have to necessarily throw stuff in the back of that. I, you know. I would say I don't, but I have. Um, <laughs> I put mattresses in the back. I've had pieces of furniture, okay. um, things too long to fit in another vehicle. So occasionally I get looks from people going down the road, you're using that car to move a dresser? You know, but I've done it. It's, it's, I, there is a utility feature to this. I don't own another pickup truck. so. This has acted like a pickup truck at times, and okay. I'm, I'm glad I, I have that utility. That's beautiful. All right, well, I know you love this car, and there's going to be another one we're going to talk about in a moment, but um, would you say this is the one? Is this a keeper, or do you have your eye on something else? This has become part of my family. Okay. Um, it, it, is this the, my dream car? I wouldn't say so, but I would say it's like your old friend. You know, someone offered me a lot of money for it, frankly. I'd have a hard time letting go of it. It'd be okay. like selling off a kid. Yeah. I mean, it just, uh, it's just, it's always been there. It's been reliable, highly reliable for an old car that's subject to, sometimes they just don't turn over, or sometimes things go on the fritz, but for 15 years of ownership, this car has been remarkably dependable. Well, to me, that kind of sounds like that's the one. So, 15 years, you sound pretty attached, it's family, so good enough. Well, William, thanks so much for sharing. We're going to be talking about another car in a moment, but I really appreciate the uh, what you've shared so far, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions from our viewers about your car, so stay tuned. I'm sure we'll be asking you some more. Thanks so much. Thanks.